திருச்சிற்றம்பல் பாடும் வரிவேல் அணி சேவல் என பாடும் பணியே பணியாய் அருள்வாய் தேடும் கயமா முகனை சிறுவில் சாடும் தனி யானை சகோதர சக்கரவர்த்தி தவராச யோகி எனும் மிக்க திருமூலனருள் மேவுநாள் என்னாலும் திருச்சிற்றம்பல் தென்னாடுடைய சிவனே போற்றி என் நாட்டவர்க்கும் இறைவா போற்றி வெற்றி வேல் முருகனுக்கு ரோகரா திருச்சிற்றம்பலம் அண்ட சராசரங்களுக்கெல்லாம் அதிபதியாக வணங்கக்கூடிய முருகப்பெருமானுடைய ஒப்பற்ற பெரும் கருணையினால் ஞானத்திரள் மிக பெருமையோட திருமூல திருமந்திரத்தினுடைய முதற் பாடம் விளக்கத்தை அன்பர்களுக்கெல்லாம் ஆங்கிலத்திலே சொல்லுவதற்கு திருவருள் கூட்டியிருக்கிறோம் The class has actually started last week and we have taken for our explanation the first song called The Purpose of the Book written by our great Thirumular. It implied a lot of principles of Saiva Siddhanta and the first song if we analyze and if we are able to understand word by word the total song will yield lot of information about the saiva siddhanta as a matter of fact we are very much interested in understanding the principles of saiva siddhanta the first step for our achievement is first step for our achievements is first to learn the things properly learn it practice it follow it that should be the steps it should be adopted for successful achievement of any project now our aim is to reach the lotus feet of lord shiva to overcome all our sufferings not only in this birth we have taken lot of births that is the very important belief of saiva siddhanta that this soul has been taking lot of births innumerable births countless so what should be our motto to come out of this suffering why this birth has been awarded by the lord shiva to us why should, why at all we should have come to this earth for a prescribed time all alone we are here we have been committing lot of deeds here but what is the motto behind our coming here why we are brought here what lord shiva expects from us we should be made clear then only we can move about that is why upper swami says that we must know our target then only our movements will be meaningful and fruitful
that is called the kurikol kurikol iladi kettene endru appar swami nan solugira he says that the whole life have been uh, the whole life has become meaningless because of my ignorance of the target is it the life meaningful if you earn some money or if you earn a house or if you earn name and fame okay all these things are earned but when we reach the uh, world those things have been prescribed as aims that's what we think but once we reach our age or when we start feeling that we are going to leave this world sooner or later we must have understood that we have not at all done anything for our target for our aim so we must clearly understand our aim that we have to come out of the sufferings we are undergoing due to births once we are leaving this body saiv siddhantam implies that we have to take another body another life in this world we have to come back of course not immediately but we have to wait for some time and once the right time comes we will be awarded another birth and we will be coming to this world again so coming going coming going pokku varavu that's what tiruvasangam also says pokku varavu punarvu vila punniyane that's what we have been doing all these ages where is this going to stop as a matter of fact unless otherwise the birth stops we cannot think of the eternal bliss so that is why our saiv siddhantam mentors are uh, they are all uh, emphasizing that we must understand why we have come to this world what we are going to achieve all these things should be clear we are here that is uh, uh, being the, this uh, human birth has been awarded to us and we are seeing around us there are lot of different uh, uh, bus we have been witnessing there is a dog there is a pig there is a horse everything uh, animal birds all the things we are just seeing that among them we have taken a human body how we have achieved the human body it has been awarded by lord shiva so that should be again there should be some expectation from lord shiva to have been that we have been awarded this human life then god is expecting something out of us that we should be um, concerned about this target we should be concerned about this god's gift and we must be uh, taking the right direction to move towards the target okay there are some principles in saiv siddhanta those principles dictate how we have taken the birth what we should do in this birth what happens when we leave this world all these things are be explained in saiv siddhanta the whole book tirumandiram is built upon the fundamentals of saiv siddhanta so unless otherwise you understand the saiv siddhanta you cannot appreciate the uh, tirumandiram if you want to appreciate it you must be able to appreciate the basic principles of saiv siddhanta of course tirumular also explains in some places the saiv siddhanta principles for example in paayiram he says padi pasu pasam yana pagan mundi he says clearly that there are only three entities 
God, souls, and the blockage in between them. Those are the three things that we must understand. And these three things, um, if you take anything in this world, it should be only in uh, these animated or inanimated things. So the whole world has been classified as inanimated and animated and the God. God has an eternal power of knowledge and he helps the souls to come out of the misery and suffering. The blockage can be otherwise known as ignorance. Souls are inherently blessed with wisdom. Of course, that wisdom has been uh, tarnished or has been covered by the ignorance. That ignorance is being called as anava in Sai Siddhartha. Some other people, some religions won't accept this anava. They say that maya, that is this world, this prabanjam, the body, everything we see in this world, that is maya and that has to be conquered for reaching the mukti. But Sai Siddhantam says that conquering maya is not our target. Conquering all of them, the ignorance in our wisdom is the target. For achieving the target, Maya has been a uh, helping element or helping tools awarded by Lord Shiva. So we have to understand the difference between all of them and Maya. Of course, both of them are to be uh, eliminated at the end at the end. See, if you are uh, willing to climb up uh, uh, star, uh, stars are required. But once you reach the height, the ladder may not be required at all. You understand? Likewise, uh, the Maya is a ladder to make you climb up from the misery to the bliss. That is how Sai Siddhantam explains about the Maya. The difference we must understand. Why we are insisting that principle? Because once we lose our human uh, body, or it is called the Tattvam. Tattvam are nothing but tools. Once we lose our temp uh, temporarily, when we are away from the tools, we are in darkness. So that is why we feel that Conquering Maya is not the motive. Conquering Anavam with the help of Maya is the motive, is the thing that has been stipulated by Lord Shiva. <clears throat> okay, our uh, aim is to explain the first song of the preface of Thirumandiram. In the last class, we explained the first line of that song. We discussed a lot of uh, other principles about Sahaja Siddhanta. And uh, the first line says, Vandravan Thani Irandavan Ginnaru. Uh, that's what the first line says. What does it mean? Vandravan Thani, Vandru, number. Vandru means one. That is the meaning of Vandru. Avan, the Almighty. Almighty is one. That is, there is only one Almighty. It is also known as in Tamil Padi. Padi Vondrada. So Vondravan Thani. There are, uh, no, there are no too many gods as we climb in uh, different uh, religions. Uh, uh, religions are climbing that their God is the supreme God of all gods. But anyway, we must understand that Almighty can be only one. Bhati can be only one. There are no equals for him. There are no supremes for him. Of course, all are inferior to him. 
all have to surrender at the feet of Lord Shiva, the one and only God, the one and only Almighty. That is Vandravan Thani. Irandavan Enaru. The God is understood only by His mercy. The flower is understood by its uh, odor. The fire is understood by its heat. The sun is understood by its rays. Likewise, the Almighty is understood by its inequable, unparalleled grace. Of course, he is uh, saying that in a rule here and uh, that grace is of two types, he says. We should not think that there are two graces he is having. Instead, we must think that the grace operates or is available to the souls in two forms. That's all. The two forms of grace, that is, Tiruvarul and Tiruvabhavam. We explained in detail in the last class how the Tiruvabhavam works and how Tiruvarul also works. The same grace, the same grace, Tamil is called Karunai grace. There are two um, qualities of Lord Shiva always felt and uttered by our mentors are the grace and the bliss. Arul Mayamanavan, Ananda Mayamanavan. So those two things about the Lord Shiva, the souls are familiar uh, in Devaram, Tiruvachakam, in all Tirumurais. Those have been gifted by Tiriyan Sambandar, Tirunam Karasar. For us to pray to Lord Shiva with their words, it should be the right uh, uh, method of worshipping also. Instead of worshipping Him with our own words, we must worship the Lord and offer our prayers through their songs. They have been awarded only for that purpose. No prayer is complete without a Devaram uttering. No prayer is complete without a Tirvasakam being uttered by you. So the Lord Shiva says to Sundara in Piriyapurana Deva Chekidara says, Yamaku Archani Pate Ahum. That's what he says. So the Archana means you must sing a song, the praising song uttered by the mentors. So the, the, uh, uh, the utmost uh, the grace of Lord uh, Shiva is known as Tiruvaru Shakti and Tiruvabhava. And we must accept one fact that so far we have felt his grace only as Thirubhavan and we are yet to experience his Thirubhavan. That is what uh, we are trying to achieve. That's what we are trying to achieve. We are trying to achieve his grace. We are uh, experiencing his Thirubhava Sakti. Only after that he has given our body, this Prabhanjam, the five basic elements, all those things they have come out of the Maya only because of Him. Don't think those things have come out of Him. The world has not come out of the Almighty. The world has come out of the Maya. It is an inert energy. It is, the, it is under the control of Lord Shiva. The world has come out only out of uh, the Maya, not from Lord Shiva, but for example, the tree comes out of a seed, not from the farmer. The farmer favors the tree coming out of the seed. Likewise, the Lord Shiva favors the Prabhanjam to be coming out of the seed of Maya. 
We must understand those things. Sai Siddhartha will explain all those things uh, as we go on. When and where requires, I will explain the principles. I'm trying to don't think that some things are not clear at the starting point. It may not be clear. It will not be clear also. Only as time grows, only when you when we pass on to uh, classes, in further classes, we will be able to appreciate the facts. In the first session itself or in the second session itself, you may not be well versed with all Saiva Siddhanta principles. You have to learn, you have to go on learning, you have to go on uh, understanding. See, some things will be uh, clear at the time of uh, when we learn it, but uh, as time grows, you may not be able to uh, remember or you may not be able to understand as time grows. Again you have to study, again you have to learn, again you have to go through it. Likewise, the continuous touch, the continuous study only makes you familiar with the basic facts. So when you hear the first time, if it is clear, okay, well and good. But don't get convinced with the first hearing itself. Go for the second session. Go for the third. Of the third time of the same session. That is also necessary. Okay, let us go ahead with the second line. The first line is Vantravan Thani, Irandavan Innarul. I think I have discussed enough with the first line. We will go to the second line. Nindranam Mundinul Nangu Unandan Aindu Vintranam. As I already told you, the song is adorned with an ornament of numbers, the serial of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. So there are different decorations being made by the these poets. They will adorn the songs composed by them with a different, uh, in Tamil it is called Ani, that is a, that is a decoration. Likewise, number decoration has been done by our uh, Thirumula in the first song. The numbers are appearing in serial, one, two, three, so that it will be more attractive and also it will be easy for you to remember the song. Those are the techniques uh, the poets are thirds will be adopting for you to uh, make familiar with the song and also easy to remember the song. In those times, uh, people used to memorize the songs so that they will be able to reproduce it at the time they want and also they will be brooming over the uh, the song in different aspects. Okay, now about the second line, Nindanan Mundinul. Nindanan Mundinul, what does it mean? See, um, it may be very difficult to uh, understand. You must closely follow me uh, you are, to understand this triple. Mundinul Nindanan means once the Lord, Lord Shiva, he is in Paravali, the space out of spaces. Vali, Paravali, space out of spaces. The space is encompassing, the space is holding so many things within itself. It is called the Suchamam. There are so many things we see, we feel. Like earth uh, or moon or Venus or something like that, Mars, all those things, where are they actually? They are in the space. That space is, that space is one of the five elements. Of course, what we are talking about uh, is, this space is one which holds all the spaces. So, that is called Paravali and uh, that is where Paravaran and Paravari. 
அல்லது பரமசிவன் பரம பரமசிவன் பராசக்தி இவை காலம் இல்லை பரமசிவன் பரம பராபரை இஸ் கால்டு பராசக்தி இன்செபரபிள் ஐ ஆல்ரெடி டோல் they are uh, existing there only in the other they are not separated the paravali in which paravaran and paravari both of them are holding the space out of the spaces now the almighty the paravaran he wants to help help all the souls he wants to help all the souls he sympathizes he takes pity over the souls which are suffering in the anavam those souls are having wisdom but since their wisdom has been completely darkened by the anavam they don't have icchai gnanam kriya and they were all suffering in the anavam they were all suffering the eternal suffering how can you compare that suffering the suffering has has been compared by our mentors already you just also think about the uh, suffering just a comparison not in full at least to your portion see it is like being in uh, in the darkness of mother's womb total darkness that's what um, our tiruvasagam um, manivasagar also says eeriru thingalil perirul pilaithum that's what he says the fourth month the soul is being covered by a darkness which cannot be explained inexplicable darkness so that darkness can be compared to anava it is completely masking it is completely masking the wisdom of the soul and soul is suffering like anything in the darkness and almighty sees and it wants to lift up the souls from the darkness it wants to help it wants to some or other remove the sufferings from the uh, souls how he helps that is the method some people say if the god thinks uh, just by mantra can he not uh, do because he is empowered to do anything he wants no the aspect is not like that god wants the soul to try for that to try to get out of the suffering he will offer all the help he will give all the help for the soul to get out of the difficulties then only it will understand the greatness of lord shiva and help suppose if you want to help somebody if you just throw away the money and he will not understand the value of help you must make the person who is getting the help he must make the you must make the person to understand the difficulty in getting the help the value of the help then only he will use the help in the right aspect likewise god also extends help but at the same time god should the god expects the soul to come, come out of the uh, suffering of course exerting some um, efforts by the soul themselves so first of all he extends some help what are the helps he is extending to the soul in the darkness he offers some tools he offers some help to the souls with the availability of the tools the soul should try to 
get out of the suffering slowly. Suppose if he wants to help, he must come down to the level of the soul. He cannot expect the soul to come to his level and get the help. Say if you want to help a beggar, we are in the uh, third floor terrace, let us say. If you want to help a beggar, begging for alms in the streets, what will you do? Will you ask the beggar to come to the terrace through the house or will you come down? So likewise God also is coming down from his level to the core, to the bottommost level. He takes seven steps to reach the soul. Even then the soul is not able to appreciate or understand the help extended by Lord Shiva. Even when he reaches, see he reaches to the bottommost level, even at that level the soul getting all the help is not able to appreciate the God's help. Then you just think of if the God is at the first level or second level, do you think the soul will be able to reach it? No. So that is why the, those nine levels, he is coming down nine levels, they have been grouped under three heads. They are known as three groups. So God is coming down. There is no doubt about it. God in his state has called Soruba. When he comes down, he is called Tadatam. In his Sorubam, no soul will be able to understand him, can avail any help out of him. It may not even think of him. Only when he comes down from his the topmost level, in what levels he is coming down? Nindranan Mundrinul. In three levels he is coming down. Each level is subdivided into four sub-levels and three these three groups he assumes to reach and help the soul. Now we can just see the chart here. Uh, the chart explains the first one we are seeing Suruba Sivam. Suruba Sivam. That is the called uh, that is the Paravali that we have explained earlier, Suruba Sivam, wherein we uh, say that Parasivam and Parabari, Paramasivam, Parabari or Parasati, they are within the Suruba Sivam, uh, they cannot be seen separately, they cannot be understood separately, they are not separable one within the other. Then comes that second stage, Tiruvarul and Tiruvabam. Irandavan Thane Innarul. Undravan Thane Irandavan Innarul. Tiruvarul Tiruvabam. Then the third stage, <coughs> Nindanan Mundrinul. That is Layam Bogam Adhikaram. So uh, this Layam Bogam Adhikaram, these three groups. These three groups explains nine levels. As a matter of fact, nine levels it explains. Those nine levels can be seen in a separate chart. I will request Mr. Ramohan to display the second chart, which explains this Layam Boham Adhikaram. It is called Navandaru Bedam. This chart is called Navandaru Bedam. Uh, here we can see that the Paravali, Parabaran, Parabari, out of which the Parabaran assumes a, a lower level. He is coming down to a lower level and assumes as Adi Sivan. Adi Sivan, uh, in some books, they say that it is one thousandth of the total power of Parabara, one thousandth of Parabara. And one thousandth of Parabara appears as Adi Shakti. 
now you please understand that adi shivan adi sakti they they are uh, they are coming out of paravali are one and the same thing one and the same thing don't think they are different things paravali is swarupam adi shivan adi sakti is tadattam how can we understand paravali swarupam it is a natural state of existence adi shivam adi sakti it is the artificial state of existence artificially is assuming these states adi shivan adi sakti he has he is assuming these artificial states just only to help the souls to get out of the misery that is why he is coming down no other expectations what the souls can give him you understand now adi shivan adi sakti now he wants to come down various levels so that the level souls can understand and reach and get the benefit out of them so the adi sakti adi shivam he is having jnana sakti kriya sakti and icha sakti those three sakties are the basics for any actions or operations even for us even the soul if it sh- should operate it should be active means its jnana sakti should be active its kriya sakti should be active its icha sakti should be active so icha sakti to to be willing god is willing to lift up all the souls from the suffering that is icha sakti so his jnana sakti he triggers the adi sakti with his jnana sakti he triggers adi sakti with jnana sakti and there comes the new level called nadam 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 is the uh, basic for the sound world as a matter of fact the the theory behind of all these levels is to produce two worlds one is world of sound another is world of light so the world of sound is to be first produced the basic for the world of sound is nadam then from nadam the bindu comes there is another chart if I am correct is there another chart another chart down there vedam it has been corrected see out of nadam bindu comes only out of bindu aparanatham comes out of abranatham apara bindu comes the um, the serial arrangement or the sequence it should be like this first sound nadam then light bindu then please understand that they are being downsized again again downsized for example if you want to understand sound only it can be understood by its frequency and wavelength and light also can be understood by its frequency and wavelength so if we uh, understand the free in in terms of frequency the very high frequency if you is inaudible to our eye ears it should be brought down to a level which is audible that is why nadam in the first level and vasai in the last level are in this earth five basic elements land water fire and air and then space so here we say uh, that uh, sound coming out of the space that sound is called vasai 
சுவை ஒளி ஊறு ஓசை நாற்றம் தீஸ் ஃபைவ் பேசிக் சென்சஸ் ஃபைவ் பேசிக் திங்ஸ் தட் ஓசை இஸ் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃப்ரம் நாதம் அஃப்கோர்ஸ் ஓசை ஹேஸ் பீன் டிரைவ்டு ஒன்லி அவுட் ஆஃப் நாதம் டவுன் சைஸ் டு தி கோர் பிகாஸ் அவர் இயர்ஸ் ஆர் ஏபிள் டு ஹியர் Uh, are able to respond to the frequency range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz the whole space is filled with so many frequencies of sounds and lights you are surrounded by so many frequencies you are surrounded by so many sounds and lights are you able to hear or see them no you are not able you are not being disturbed at all all those sounds and we can suppose if you have a tuner here if you tune down you will be able to hear so the whole space is filled with so many frequencies but they are out of the range of your audibility that's why you are not able to hear them you are not being disturbed likewise originally when the sound was produced it was produced as a nadam and subsequently it is downsized as abaranadam the light also downsized to aparabindu param mele aparam kile up and down param means up aparam means down so up and down so they are they are being downsized these four stages you can show the chart please show, show the chart in the chart uh, no it is not this chart the other one navandar vedam Navandarvedam, the, uh, from Adi Sakti, uh, Nadam, uh, I will correct in the next chart. Uh, the original is Nadam, and then Bindu, and then comes Aparanatham, and then comes Aparabindu. These are the four stages in the first group. These four are understood as Layam, that is Aruvam, that is formless. then comes the next stage sada shivam it is called bhogam that is formless form this uh, sada shivam how it is uh, created as a matter of fact it comes out of apara bindu how it, it comes out of it adi shivam triggers apara bindu with the jnana shakti and kriya shakti equal then sada shivam comes uh, the chart uh, may not be uh, little clear i will make the chart more clear because triggers with the jnana shakti and kriya shakti equally should clearly point out five sada shivam and uh, this uh, triggers with the kriya shakti jnana shakti that should be kriya shakti should be uh, pointed towards a bindu and it should appear as the second uh, stage anyway uh, layam boham adhiharam are the three groups of levels the adi shivan triggers adi shakti to take the forms so now please understand nadam avaranadam bindu avara bindu சதாசிவம் மகேஸ்வரன் உருத்திரன் திருமால் பிரமன் ஆல் தீஸ் நயன் லெவல்ஸ் ஆர் கண்ட்ரோல்டு பை ஆதி சக்தி தே ஆர் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆதி சக்தி ஆதி சக்தி ஹஸ் கம் டவுன் ஆல் தீஸ் லெவல்ஸ் தீஸ் ஆதி சக்தி இஸ் நோன் ஹஸ் திருபவம் திஸ் திருபவன் ஹஸ் டேக்கன் திஸ் நைன் லெவல்ஸ் to avert the souls so many tools usually maheshwaran uruttiran tirumal pirama they assume the form those things can be understood by our uh, senses for example how uruttiran will look like how tirumal will look like what is the um, significance of brahma what is the significance of maheshwaran what are the forms they assume 
those things are being discussed in adhikaram but they never uh, forget that all these nine stages are under the control of adi shakti who is in uh, control of adi shiva adi shiva and adi shakti you must think of the sun and its rays or the uh, the fire and its uh, heat likewise you must understand them you should not understand adi shakti as a separate entity from adi shiva if you think of adi shakti you should never forget adi shiva is also along with adi shakti if you say about adi shiva adi shakti is along with him so those significances you should not forget okay nindranan moondri nul the please show the chart nindranan moondri nul what does it mean nindranan moondri nul he creates layam boham adhikaram these three uh, groups three levels moondri nul three levels layam boham adhikaram layam formless and then he wants to take a form then only the souls can understand so he wants to assume form when he goes from formless to form he passes through a stage called called a formless form that is aru urvam that is called sadashivam so this sadashivam is a master of all adhikar he is that he is called as bhoga why god assumes all these nine stages because the wisdom of souls should be cleared stage by stage and brahma creation tirumal taking care urutiran wiping out the the body at the end of their lifetime maheshwaran is form of function he is to make the soul to be attractive towards the godly affairs likewise there are different aspects and uh, duties of these murtams they are called uh, murtams because they have the form maheshwaran uh, uh, in agams they say in 28 agams maheshwaran has it takes a different forms like dakshinamurthy nadrajar and then somaskanda all those forms are prescribed and they are specified we cannot create a new form for lord shiva as we like that is against the uh, uh, rule of shiva siddhantam and also you should not assume new form for a god for our god see somaskandar means we must have lord shiva god of shakti and then lord muruga that is called the somaskandar you cannot create a theory that a lord shiva has another daughter and daughter is also in the uh, form no you cannot create that is why uh, arnagirinathar says kavaludra sitthar satsamaya pramathar nal kadavul pradishtai parpalavaha agama vadivangal the forms that are allowed and prescribed by agam those things can be worshiped not other forms of Uh, Shiva, you cannot uh, create uh, lots of forms of uh, Shiva and uh, just to make the people confused. You should not do like that. If you want to worship a form of Shiva, because in formless state it is very difficult for the souls to worship or offer prayer. They want a form. That is the the form is called Murtha. in murti in murti stage if you want to worship you must be very certain whether this murti has been allowed by our shiva siddhant the agamas shiva agamas whether this murti kavadutra sitthar satsamaya pramatha nal kadavul pradishtai parpalavaga karidi payar kurithu uru vargam gittu idar karivir poga pogathu ulalvaan arnai nadar is uh, very furious about it worshiping different uh, forms of lords no it's not allowed only allowed uh, 
uh, forms that there is more terms we can make worship we can pray we can offer our prayers you understand so likewise nindanan mundinul means he takes the levels to reach the soul in nine levels in suppose uh, if we want to uh, emphasize some points where are they actually uh, located suppose for nadam for bindu somebody should be in charge aparanadam apara bindu somebody should be in charge these are the levels created under the control of adi shakti and somebody should be there to take care of those levels only the souls with a lot of uh, goodness and uh, those souls that uh, those have come up you yeah, know those are nominated by adi shakti they are not elected they are nominated the they, they are deserve to be posted there that's what adi shivan and adi shakti decides and post them in nadam in aparana in bindu in aparanatham apara bindu and also in sada shivam understand that all these levels are occupied only by the souls only by the souls almighty doesn't uh, uh, operate directly he just drives sada shivam in turn sada shivam drives mahaswaran in turn maheswaran drives urudhiran urudhiran drives tirumal and brahma tirumal and brahma are the control of urudhiran so they are located also in different worlds so different worlds are all to be created for them to exist and execute their duties brahma tirumal urudhiran where are they actually they are in this prabhajam called prakriti maya maheswaran in suddhamaye sadashivam in suddhamaye and nadam bindu aparanatham apara bindu sometimes apara nadam apara bindu are called shivam and shakti also don't get confused some in some notations in some books they would have listed this as uh, shivam shakti apara shivam apara shakti nadam சக்தி அபரநாதம் அபரசக்தி ஆர் நாதம் பிந்து சிவம் சக்தி ஸோ டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் நோட்டேஷன் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் டைப்ஸ் ஆஃப் தீஸ் நோட்டேஷன்ஸ் ஆர் ப்ரெசன்டேஷன்ஸ் வில் பி தேட் டோன்ட் கெட் கன்ஃபியூஸ் பட் லயம் ஹேஸ் ஃபோர் ஸ்டேஜஸ் இன் விச் நாதம் அண்ட் பிந்து டாமினேட் தே ஆர் டாமினேட்டிங் இன் தீஸ் லயம் ஸோ சதா சிவம் is called the bogam this is formless form and these are all the these are three groups of uh, levels or three groups of levels god has created so that he can come down to the whatever he can he even brahma has some power means those powers have been awarded only by adi shakti tirumal has some powers uh, adi shakti has awarded she has awarded all the powers to the nine levels people are there to govern to dictate to uplift the souls in the lower levels you understand so this has been mentioned in a short form by tirumula as nindranan mundrinul nindranan mundrinul and he further says nangu unarndan nangu unarndan what is that number 4 indicate nangu unadda nangu means in uh, tamil in tamilian four uh, things are the targets for uh, the that uh, that is the four targets are the uh, things to be achieved by a human being in the world the first one is called aram the second one is porul the third one is inbam the fourth one is vidu they are called purushartham these four stages these four uh, achievements are to be uh, main uh, targets for any soul this is the uh, main motto of a uh, tamil legacy in ancient times 
if the books are formed if the books are written by our mentors or by our people then only in these four groups the book should be classified for example if if a poet is writing a book this book concerned whether aram concerned with the pur or concerned with the inbam or concerned with the vid where it should be uh, grouped where it should be classified under which section it comes likewise they will be writing book see the any writer any author if he wants to write a book he must first of all understand in which group the book belongs his book is going to belong whether it is going to belong to the aram or to the purul or to the inbam or to the vid so the these are the four the in uh, the tamilians uh, they basically say these are the four targets to be achieved by any human being in his lifetime what do you mean by aram the basic discipline the basic discipline of a man in the society what are the characters to be cultivated being helpful to the others talking uh, good words being kind to others and uh, following good good habits helping others likewise said uh, they are all very general in general they are called arab suppose somebody is doing something means he will see to it that whether it uh, it is an arab whether it belongs to it whether it follows the rules prescribed in arab whether it adheres to the rules of arab then only he will do it otherwise if it is against it he will not ever do it that is the basic discipline of any human being you understand there are a lot of books written by our uh, tamil poets which belong to this category of arab then there is next to that uh, uh, that is known as the purushartham next to purushartham purul purul means uh, how to behave in the society and also it uh, pertains uh, the major portion pertains to the rulers how to rule a country how to safeguard the people from enemies how to give a good rule what are the what are the things the king should possess as his, as his qualities likewise it deals so many things if a war comes how the king should behave what are the things he must take care of likewise this is called the purul if you just go through tirukural you will be able to understand uh, the politics comes under this purul purul means the suppose if you want to lead a life you must earn things isn't it unless otherwise you earn things you must uh, be useful to the society how are you going to be useful to the society in what way you are going to earn your money whether that uh, uh, job uh, pertains to the first group or likewise so the way in which you earn the money and spend that is also called or or it even it pertains to a king uh, how he rules the country likewise comes the purul the third one is inbo the actual the uh, life how to lead the life with a partner with a partner so the life means um, a human being should be dependent on another human being and likewise a couple leads a life called illaram that is the uh, life should be Uh, following certain rules and aspects in that life also so it is a act of matter of fact it is a private highly private but even when it is private it should be sacred that's what even when you enjoy you must have that convincing consciousness that what i am enjoying enjoying is not against rule is not against rule. so inbum means what is the enjoyment that you can reap under the rules and regulations in this world in this world whether the enjoyment comes 
in a permitted way. That is called, that it more, uh, almost pertains to the family life. What are the duties of a family life? How will they bring their children? As a matter of fact, if you just see uh, the, about the children, uh, in Kamathupal, he has not at all specified about children. He has talked about children elsewhere. So, the duties of the, uh, a, a man in his life, what should he execute? Taking care of the guests, Virundomba, taking care of the guests, taking care of the kith and kin relatives. When they are under some suffering or when they are under some sort of uh, uh, sorrow, you must uh, extend your help. You must uh, help them to come out of the issues. Likewise, uh, they are having some duty. Sutram Tadal, uh, the our ancestors will used to say, you must have a lot of relationship. You must cater to their needs. In turn, you must also avail help from them. Likewise, it is called the Inbom. Then what is the fourth one? That is Vida. After your life, where will you settle down? It is a subtle point. See, it is not known. It is Suchamu. We may not know clearly about that thing, but our ancestors and mentors have specified about that. So they have also written some books about that. You must uh, read that those books. You must uh, try to abide by the rules stipulated that Aram is different from Arul. Arul is the grace of Lord who has helped you to come to this world, to live in this world and also when you leave this world, he will extend his help. You must uh, understand that. Only His grace has brought us here. Only His grace is helping us here. And only His grace is going to help us when we leave this world also. So that is about the eternal uh, place where we will not come back to Him. If we go to that place, that we do, that is the final destination. That destination at the lotus feet of Lord Shiva, if you just reach it, you need not come back. Suppose if you don't reach that, you have to come back again and get better trained and you must make yourself fit enough to reach the lotus feet of Lord Shiva. So that is called the Vid, the fourth destination, final destination of all the souls to come out of the misery. These days it has been suffering out of this Anava. Now it has totally come out of that and surrendering to the lotus feet of Lord Shiva coming out of all miseries. That is the fourth place. So in all four places, Lord Shiva dominates and extends his grace. So Nindanan Mundinul Nangu Unandan, it means he is the sole reason for us to understand these four Purushatams are the four basic targets, Aram Purul Inbam Quid. I think with that we can conclude our today's session and we can continue in our next session that is the coming Saturday. I am trying to explain these things uh, with the basic uh, concept because I am just assuming that uh, some newcomers should not uh, find it difficult to follow us. That is why I am going into the basics very deeply and I am trying to explain them. Uh, as much as possible. Those things are very complicated, of course. That's why uh, um, at the start of the time I have told you that it may not be very easy to follow you immediately in the first session or the second session. Only after a uh, long uh, journey, after five or six sessions, I think you will be able to appreciate what we are discussing about. You understand, we are uh, discussing about the mercy of Lord Shiva. How he is helping us? There is somebody, there is one eternal uh, power, there is somebody to help us. We need not 
we worried about all times the our sufferings we can avail his grace we can avail his help only thing is we must uh, search for it and seek it we must beg for it we must pray for it so that's what we are doing so if you understand and beg i think it will be meaningful that is why we are trying to understand the concepts thank you that uh, for your uh, valuable time you have devoted for this session once again if uh, I, i have to thank uh, mrs saravan and kapil they they are insisting that their names should not be mentioned but i some or other i feel that uh, i would be failing in my duty if i don't mention those names only for my satisfaction not the for sat for the satisfaction of the couple of saravan only for my satisfaction i just mentioning the names they have taken so much of pain they have arranged this after long struggle they have arranged the sessions i think by god's grace lord shiva's grace um, it will be useful for some people who are trying to are willing to understand saiva siddhantam and willing to understand tirumula tirumandiram i think it will be useful i hope so once again i thank uh, thank them for arranging this uh, series of lectures again we will be meeting in the next saturday session at uh, noon okay thank you and let me conclude this session with the chant of namashivaya mantra five times please you can just uh, again rechant it as i am closing it because in your state in your place itself you can rechant it following me om namashivaya om namashivaya om namah shivaya om namah shivaya trichitramalam i am familiar with the terminology in tamil for sai siddhanta but uh, in english i have to search for words uh, it, they should be they may not be exact translation of the tamil words but uh, they should be at least uh, near by they should be having near by meaning that's what i am trying to give you the words uh, at places uh, sometimes i am uttering the tamil words themselves because i expect you to get accustomed to the tamil words also so that you will be able to appreciate in future thank you let lord bless you tirichittu yenadude sivane potri yenattavarkum iraba potri vetivel murugalukku arohara namachivayum tirichittambalam Yeah, that was awesome.